the basement of a bigger club, Capital, and um, yeah, basically the people who were in the place um, had um, a um, liking for a lot of bass, and <laughs> they also did PA rental themselves, so they also had at their disposal uh, some 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 nice equipment and so we actually were very privileged um, to be able to do sort of dubstep in early times with uh, a proper system which is rare in Berlin I, I have to add uh, most clubs in Berlin sound is very shitty <laughs> so which works okay for techno but it just you know um, yeah so anyways um, so that was the early times uh, not a lot of people I think um, this was also a very small place, uh, like I said, basement room, and um, I think on the average we would get no more than 50 people, and maybe, um, you know, 100, 110 people max in that place, and it would be packed, <laughs> but anyways, those were the early days, and um, yeah, it just built up from there, basically, um, you know, at some point the place just became too small, and we had to find a bigger better venue and um yeah currently we're still making two more parties no one more party at uh, vcf club here in berlin which has quite a nice sound system and then yeah we'll see where it goes from there but like you were saying earlier there are in berlin several established dubstep nights going um of course uh, substance at Bergheim, <laughs> which is very important, um, and then um, several others. Um, but since this is a substance special, we won't mention them. <laughs> yeah, we're going to substance. We're coming to substance. We are, we are, we are uh, kind of uh, approaching it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have one more question for you. As you already said, there are no like maybe between three or five, six established uh, parties here in Berlin. Regular dubstep parties. Um, uh, when you remember back uh, in the in the old days, yeah, uh, in the early dubstep times, I mean, I can still remember. I was with you at the, uh, at these clubs, yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about how did it develop that even uh, more promoters, more people wanted to make all of a sudden dubstep parties? How how did it come? Were there any rivals or something or any competition? No? Well, you know, I think um, again that's uh, just a question of how the sound progressed internationally. It became more known and, you know, had more press coverage or whatnot. Um, and so I think, you know, what's happening now is that a lot of promoters are um, sort of just um, picking up on a new trend and, you know, more or less trying to capitalize on it. Um, you know, of course, there's also, you know, new crowds being uh, sort of um, won over for the sound and... Uh, you know, promoters in there doing parties, so, you know, but I think it's just getting bigger, you know, and maybe it still is, you know, I think it still is, yeah, so. so. Okay, so now let's uh, come a bit uh, to the to the Burkhain substance thingy. Um, um, the, uh, Paul, can you maybe uh, uh, tell us a bit about how, I mean, uh, we, we already had a show with Marcel Littmann and Marcel Fengler like one year ago, and they already uh, said, or they even played like some dubstep tunes on our show, and they said that they played during the warm-ups or after that uh, at, at Berghain Club, so there was kind of a uh, certain appeal at Berghain for the sound, I don't know. Um, how did it come that like such a well-established techno and house club like the Berghain, yeah, suddenly opened their doors for a completely... Uh, not sure completely, but for kind of different sound, for different groove, for different different rhythm. Um, well, I think um, the the techno, well, the guys doing techno and dub techno, and you know, certainly the the, the guys that work at Hardwax and the guys that release tunes through the Oscar label and the Hardwax affiliated labels have been into dubstep and been pushing dubstep you know, for a long time so it's, it's not it's certainly not a new thing for them um, and when I moved to Berlin which is about 18 months ago um, you know one, one of the obvious things for me um, in terms of kind of like doing something you know wanting to do something in the city was to do a, do, do a big party you know because there had been kind of smaller nights like Free Camp and the other parties um, but there hadn't really been uh, 
like a, a big pie at one of the big clubs. I mean, they've been kind of like the old one-off thing, but that had usually been, uh, you know, a couple of dubstep DJs and other, you know, DJs as well to kind of pull the crowds in. Um, so, I mean, and the obvious place in Berlin to do a big party is obviously Bergheim because that's the best club and it's got the best sound system and it's, you know, it's the best atmosphere and it's, it's, it's the kind of iconic thing in the city. So, um, basically, after m myself and the, um, my kind of co-promoter, uh, um, Paul, who runs the Shorefire Agency, we're both called Paul, it's very confusing, by the way. Um, the two Pauls, we're kind of, I'm Paul 1, that's, that's, that's usually the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's what most people say. Oh, Big Paul. That's, that's his other one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's older than me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the two of us, when, when we, you know, kind of like locked everything down and you know, decided, okay, we're, we're actually, this is actually going to happen somewhere. Um, we, you know, we we hooked up a meeting, and I think um, obviously the guy, the guys that that, that run the club. Um, are very tight with the hard rights people. So, for example, um, uh, Torsten, who runs the distribution thing down there, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure, and, and DJP, and, and obviously Marcel works there as well. So, there's, I'm, I'm sure there've been, you know, uh, conversations have been ongoing. You know, so by the time we got in there for our meeting, and you know, to say, can we do a dubstep party at Berkheim? You know, I'm, I'm sure they've taken the decision already because. Um, we went in there expecting, you know, at the most to get you know, a, a Sunday night maybe or a Thursday night or whatever. And the first thing they said to us was, well, do you want to do a Friday? And obviously the Burkine room had never been open on a Friday before. So we, you know, we were, you know, we were pleasantly surprised, shall we say, by the, you know, the, the turn of events. Um, and so obviously, you know, to get such an amazing opportunity was, was, was fantastic. And, and the way that it turned out was great as well. You know, the first one was an amazing night and, and the second two... Have, yeah, it is two. Yeah, so the second two were great as well, um, and the fourth one is on a third of April. Uh, I hope to see you all down then. Yeah, thank you very much for the very precise explanation. Uh, um, now we have uh, some a couple of questions from uh, people listening to the show, and uh, um, they are asking questions. For example, like um, dubstep sound like um, a whole big genre, but they all apparently already a couple of sub genres. How do, can you tell us about this? Well, you know, like I said, you know, the thing I always liked about it is that it sort of encompasses a very wide range of sounds. Um, so, you know, sub-genres, you know, I, I think uh, any of the, you know, supposed sub-genres that you could name, um, they're really sort of, they or they're wanting to be more genres of themselves. And, you know, for me, it's just a good collective term to sort of describe you know the sounds that I you know that can be expected of me uh, in a club or whatnot and so you know it's it's dubstep it's all dubstep you know <laughs> I mean you know funny funny ways to describe you know new new sounds uh, you know always coming up but um, no I reject uh, any sort of uh, legitimate claim to dubstep subgenres <laughs> how about you Paul yeah, I would totally agree with you. I think there's there's certainly um, different styles within the genre, but I think um, the whole point of it was was to avoid any kind of like sub categorization within within the sound. So so yeah, you can go to a dubstep night and hear something completely different to what I play, for example. But you know, for me, it's 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 still dubstep, and I think you know any attempt to break it down is only going to kind of muddy the waters really because. I don't think there's any point in it at all. As I said before, the, the kind of holy grail is to have a lot of sub bass, 